In the wake of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's assassination, Japanese citizens have repeated a similar refrain. This is not who we are. The phrase refers to just how rare gun violence is in Japan and just how tightly the government restricts gun access. But it also describes a collective revulsion in seeing political assassinations back in the national spotlight after over half a century of peace. On November 4th, 1921, Prime Minister Takahashi Hara was walking at Tokyo Station to catch a train to Kyoto when a railroad switchman harboring right-wing sentiments stabbed him to death. And at the very same train station, nine years later, nearly to the day, a member of an ultra-nationalist secret society shot Premier Yuko Hamaguchi he died of his wounds months later. And in a 1932 attempted coup d'etat, a group of young far-right Navy cadets stormed Prime Minister Tsuyoshi Inokai's residence, shot him dead. His last words were reportedly, if we could talk, you would understand, to which the young officers replied, dialogue is useless. The cadet's original assassination plan had also included murdering an English film star named Charlie Chaplin, yes, that Charlie Chaplin, who was visiting the Japanese Prime Minister. The plotters were hoping to provoke a U.S.-Japan war, but they were thwarted because they were unable to locate Chaplin. He was watching a sumo wrestling match with the Prime Minister's son at the time. Shinzo Abe's own grandfather, Prime Minister Nobusuke Kishe, was stabbed in the thigh and severely injured during a political event in 1960. And later that same year, during a televised political debate, a 17-year-old ultra-nationalist stormed the stage and stabbed socialist politician Inejiro Asanuma to death. A photograph of the stabbing later went on to win the 1961 Pulitzer Prize. While incidences of political violence have occurred on a smaller scale in Japan since then, Asanuma's 1960 murder was the country's last high-profile political assassination until Prime Minister Abe's death earlier this month. After 62 years of peace, many citizens believed this horrific tradition was a relic of the early 20th century. We've yet to fully grasp how Abe's assassination will reshape Japanese politics, but in a key parliamentary election held last Sunday, his ruling party made sizable gains, a success that was surely propelled by an outpouring of sympathy for Abe. The victory will extend Abe's legacy and could even allow his supporters to achieve some of the political goals that eluded him during his time in office.